You change nothing for African people until you change the consciousness of African people. Our biggest issue is our psychology. We are multicultural to a fault. We have been brainwashed by black religion into believing putting your race first is a sin against God. We're the only people whose religion is totally separate from their political struggle. The European Jew can go into a synagogue and pray to his white God. And when he's done praying to his white God in the synagogue, he can sit around and talk about how to get the rest of your money right there in the synagogue. When the Arab is done making Salat on Friday, he can stay in the masjid and talk about how to open up a few more 7-Elevens in your neighborhood. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There's no separation between worship of God and political, economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. But when you come to the black community, go to one of these churches in Miami and say, if you want to have a conversation on Sunday about how to bring back the black dollar, how to make the Democratic Party accountable to black people. How to make the police accountable to the black community. You know what they're going to tell you? We don't allow political conversation in here. Mm -hmm. This is the Lord's house. You come here to pray. You want to talk that black stuff? Go down the street. They don't do that in the Jewish synagogue. They don't do that in the Arab masjid. Yeah. The Chinese are Christian too, some of them. But guess what? In the Chinese church, they handle all business pertinent to the Chinese people right there. We are split. How can I serve a God that doesn't allow me to organize for black power in the name of that God. And so religion has hypnotized us into a multiculturalism that is going to put black people in a state of perpetual genocide if we don't do something soon. Being ashamed to be black, hating being black, not wanting to be black. What do you see going on right now? This whole identity crisis we got in the black consciousness community. Negroes hate being black so much, they wake up one day, I'm a Native American. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm a Cherokee. Yeah. I'm a Choctaw. Yeah. I'm a Seminole. Yep, yep, yep. But nobody told them the Cherokees own African slaves. Nobody told them the Choctaws own African slaves. Mm. Nobody told them the Seminoles own African slaves. So if your mother got Cherokee in her family, how do we know your mother wasn't a slave Slave-holder. of the Cherokee? Damn. Yeah. And the five major Native American uh, tribes fought with the Confederacy against the freedom of black people. They fought to maintain slavery. And we running around bragging, talking about I got Native American. So red blood is better than white blood. Slave blood is slave blood. I don't give a damn if it's a red slave master, a yellow slave master, or a brown slave master. The point that I'm making is this. If we want black people to get on board with a truly global Pan-African liberation struggle, we have to give them something to be proud of. The most honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey said we have to sell black people back to themselves. We have to make them proud to be black and that begins with economics and education. Until we can hire black men, until we can hire black women, until we can provide an economic opportunity for members of our community, they'll never be loyal to us. And that's why we have more sellouts, more traitors, more Negropians, more snow bunny lovers than any other race, because we are the least likely to be able to provide an opportunity for our own people. Chinese kids can get a job from the Chinese community. Arabs can get a job from the Arab community. Latinos can get a job from the Latino community. Mm -hmm. How many black kids in Miami who need an after school job can come and get one from black people? And then you got the black church, the biggest exploiter of the black community, taking in billions of dollars a year. Billions! Y'all got mega churches in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. How many black men these mega churches putting to work? How many single mothers these mega churches in Miami putting to work? Are any of these mega churches fighting against mass incarceration, miseducation, gentrification, police genocide, or access to wealth? You can't find a church in America that's at the front line of fighting for better schools, against police brutality, against economic apartheid, against miseducation and mass incarceration. How can you claim to be a servant of the Lord? How can you claim to be a man of God, but you okay with your people living in hell? Black people living in hell. 
black people living in hell, catching hell, living in hell, and the pastor, who's supposed to be an agent of the Lord, is absolutely comfortable with you living in hell. They say money is the root of all evil. No, it's not. The love of money is not even the root of all evil. The root of all evil is not having no damn money. When you leave here tonight, are you ducking from rich people? No, you're looking out for Mike, Mike, and Tay Tay because they hungry as <laughs> shit. And they'll take your car, your jewelry, your money. You understand me? Being broke, you understand? Really? It's the need for money. That's the devil's work. You understand me? And the black church is not empowering black people to escape poverty. Right. I believe in spirituality. I don't believe in religion. Let me give you the difference. Teach me, teach me, boss. Spirituality is a personal and community system of trying to comprehend one's relationship with God. Trying to figure out one's purpose on life, in life, and trying to achieve God consciousness, which is reunion with your creator. Mm -hmm. That's spirituality. Religion is a system of psychological control and economic exploitation by parasites in the community who simply want to live off other people's money without earning it. And so they manipulate you into believing that only if you believe in this particular religious narrative that can't be proven, can't be scientifically validated. Jesus Christ don't have a cemetery. There's no gravestone. Moses has no gravestone. Muhammad Ibn Abdullah has no gravestone. Noah, Jacob, where is the grave? For these religious leaders I'm not arguing that they don't exist oh, yeah, you know that. I could I'm not arguing that. that they don't exist What I'm saying is Your religious beliefs cannot be scientifically verified mm -hmm. You understand me Spirituality doesn't concern itself With religious narrative In other words When you look at traditional African spirituality mm -hmm. Even if you look at Chinese And we gave it to them because we civilized China. East India, we gave it to them. We civilized them. I got a good question. They focus on establishing a relationship with supreme consciousness. They don't focus on, I'm talking about their traditional spiritual systems, mm -hmm. not their modern stuff like mm -hmm. Christianity. Mm -hmm. They don't focus on whether or not Jesus Christ was your savior, whether or not Muhammad was the last prophet of God. Whether or not Moses was sit with the Ten Commandments. You understand me? Mm -hmm. They don't focus on that because that is doctrine and dogma. And doctrine and dogma has nothing to do with building a relationship with God. Let me give you an example. Neither one of you know your mother, hypothetically. You don't know your mom. Mm -hmm. You finally found out who your mother was. And I show up and I say, before you can know your mother... I'm going to give you a whole sheet of things you got to believe about your mother. You got to believe this. You got to believe that. Can I ask you a question? Believing any of these things I told you are a precondition to building a relationship with your mother. Does any of these beliefs help you build a relationship with your mom? No. Does it? No. The relationship is built through what? Direct contact. Yeah. So what is the purpose of dogma? What is the purpose of having people believe Jesus died for your sins? What is the purpose of having people believe Muhammad was the last prophet? And I respect both religions. Don't get me wrong. I was raised in both of them. Control. I'll pray in the masjid. I'll pray in the church. Control. Yeah, control. It's mind control. Whenever a Negro pops up claiming to be sent by God, you know you're dealing yeah. with a hustler. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're dealing with a hustler. I, said, I don't give a damn who it, it is. Control. I don't care when, when, how, no, how long ago they lived. No exception. Any black person no who has ever come to the black community claiming to be sent by God was a hustler. And one of the reasons why I have so much respect for people like the Honorable Frederick Douglass and the Honorable Marcus oh Garvey is because neither one of them sought to exploit the religious weaknesses of black people for personal gain. Garvey is the only leader post-slavery to build a mass movement and he did not have to exploit any religion to do it. Everybody else exploited religion in order to do what? Control the mind of black people, mostly for money. On the spirituality tip, mm -hmm. and again, much respect to the Muslims and Christians, because as a Pan-Africanist, 
We don't believe in dictating your spiritual beliefs. We believe in freedom of religious worship. Marcus Garvey, the Honorable Marcus Garvey was a Christian. El Haj Malik El Shabazz Malcolm X was a Muslim. J. Rabbi Arnold Ford, who was the music director for the Honorable Marcus Garvey, he was a Hebrew, but they were all Pan-Africanists. So we believe in freedom of religion. I don't care what you pray to. Mm -hmm. I don't care how you pray as long as you ain't got a snow bunny Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, if you got a snow bunny Christ, then we got to have a conversation because you're pushing white supremacy supremacy through imagery. You yeah. understand me? Yeah. But I, you can pray to the trash can, pray to the floor, pray to the rats and the roaches. I don't give a damn how you pray. I don't care how you eat. I'm only concerned with how you think. The revolutionary is concerned with how you think. As black people, we get caught up in things that are totally irrelevant towards our emancipation. So what, you a Christian? So what, you a Muslim? Why does that stop me from working with you? Prayer ain't why we suffer. We suffer because we are African. And I believe until we inject the divinity of blackness back into black religion, black religion will never be useful for black people. Because we have allowed outsiders to force us to cut out the divinity of blackness from our religion. So when somebody says, what color is Jesus? You say it don't matter. Why don't it matter? If God made Jesus an African, if Jesus was blue, black, purple with a nappy head like mine, how can it not, not matter, matter yeah. what his color was? Yep. But you go to any black church, the first thing they tell you, his color don't matter. If he was white, it would matter. If he was Chinese, it would matter. If he was a European Jew, it would matter. But because he was black, all of a sudden it don't matter. Wait. And by disqualifying your melanin from the religious equation, your religious equation loses all of its power. There's no divinity in any religion that does not honor the God chemical of melanin in African people because it is the black skin of the African that contains the molecule that allows us to reach God consciousness. The blackness is the missing element in our religious worship.